Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Two Minute Tips for Healthy Beauty and Confident Aging. I'm Sharon Danley, and this channel's focus is on inner and outer beauty through simplicity, strength, style, and grace. I'd like to see if there are people here first before I go any further. So if you could give me a thumbs up or um, a little something, that would be terrific. Now I know that there's usually a lag time, so I'm going to give it time to catch up with, you know, the lag, although I don't mean lag between lips and voice. But anyway, I see that there's a couple joining. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, whoever you are, if you could just let me know uh, by putting a comment up, that would be fantastic who you are and who you're and who's watching. That would be fabulous. So seeing as how we have, um, a, you know, a, a few here right now. I'm going to go ahead and talk about the fact that this uh, week we're doing a review of I'm the Boss of Me. Uh, and, and we're going to go over um, some of the stuff with respect to our uh, you know, personal commercial or elevator speech that we were talking about. So, so that's really where we're going to hone in because we found a lot of little things that I think will help people by doing these reviews. And then we're going to have a quick lip tip that I've been working on and I think I've solved a few little problems for some of us. And then of course our usual Q&A. All right, so let's jump right into it, shall we? So our... Uh, our, our uh, what do you call it, um, video, or not our video, but our, our review, I'm sorry, I've got a few technical things going through my brain at the same time. Our review is about um, our personal commercial that was the assignment last week. Now, just to let you know, I've opened up a Facebook page, and I've put the link in the description box below, or it's now called uh, See More. There's a Facebook page that's private and closed. So people can can try out their elevator speech or their personal commercial and get some feedback and help with each other and we get ideas and that sort of thing. So I think it's a good place to work in between the sessions that we have here on Facebook. Um, and I wanted to say that uh, one of the things that I've discovered in, in looking at some of these um, personal commercials or elevator speeches is that it's brought back to mind how we women have been indoctrinated to think of ourselves as only being in service uh, to others. You know, we, we associate ourselves with our husbands or our partners or our children or our grandchildren or whatever. And and in doing wonderful service that we do do, and that is in, it's in, it is an important aspect of life. It's just not valued uh, as it should be in society, in my not so humble opinion. However, what this personal commercial is doing and what we need to look at is how we can deconstruct how we've been indoctrinated to think of ourselves as the caregivers, the service people, of society. And again, a very important job. There's no two ways about it. Society couldn't work well if it weren't for women. However, who are we without those things? If we didn't have to think of the others that we think about in our daily lives, who are we? What, have we, what are we all about? What are our passions? Uh, what are our... Um, what are the things that we, you know, have left behind, so to speak, in making a choice to be in service or, uh, and loving service to those around us? Okay? It's just something to think about. Um, and, and I want, it, it's important for this commercial or elevator speech to think of it as an introduction to a stranger whose interest you want to garner. In other words, there's somebody that you, you are impressed by and you want them to be impressed by you, okay? So how can you influence them in 15 seconds to, huh, oh, I think I'd like to know more about this person. Does that make sense? So um, what I wanted to, 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 to talk about too is to um, 
is to experiment uh, and I, uh, I, with some stuff, with our elevator speeches. One of the things that I've noticed is, and it's true everywhere, we don't make enough use of our dictionaries and thesaurus. Seriously, we don't. Um, we keep using the same words over and over when we have a plethora of other words that can fit in. The more we, we learn to, um, to use alternate words and language, the more expressive we can become and the more sometimes we find that there is a word that really depicts or expresses what we're really feeling. Does that, does that make sense? So I'd really like you to, to, to seriously either think of getting a thesaurus if you don't have one and a dictionary, or you can use your, the digital ones online. They're, they're, they're really quite good and quite fast. Um, and you know, I use them all the time. Now, this is important because it's kind of like, it's, 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 it's a tool. Like if you think of it with your makeup, if you want to do good eyebrows or eyeliner or lips, you need a good brush, right? You, you, you might know where you want it to go and that sort of thing, but unless you have the right brush, you're not going to be able to express the brows like you'd like to. Well, it's the same thing with expressing who you are. If you don't have enough words in, in your back pocket to express who you are, then you're not going to get the job done quite as good as you would if you did. Does that make sense? Now, I want to show you a little experiment um, that I did. Um, Back in the 90s, I wrote for a homeless magazine. Now, I put this up on the Facebook page to give people the idea of just the power of words and what we say and how we say them and how we talk about ourselves and all that sort of thing. Words have massive power uh, uh, on how we think about ourselves, how we interact with other people. They really do. So, this was a little something that I wrote for a homeless paper here in Toronto. I had a column for a few weeks. And what I did was um, I would go through the dictionary. and I'm, Let me go this way. <laughs> there. And this thesaurus. And what I did, if you can see at the bottom of this thing, I found this is what I call the F word. So what I did was I found all the words with the letter F that I could find in the dictionary and the thesaurus. And I listed them all. And I looked at them. And then I, I tried to think of something that I could write about. So in this case, I wrote about friends. Now, I'm not sure if you can see this very well or not, but I'm go I'm, I'm, I'll read it out to you because I, I want you to think about it. And what I did was I used uh, show tunes, I used music, uh, I used, uh, uh, you know, things, famous sayings or marketing statements or whatever. And I made a story out of it. And every, and I tried to use as many words that began with the letter F as I could. And when I wrote the piece, I bolded all the F words. So this is what I wrote. Um, it is often been said, your friends are your fortune. I firmly believe this to be true. In fact, a first-rate friend of mine inspired me to define this F word. Figuring for a bit, I came up with the following. Faithful friends flatter you fairly. Fake friends find fault. Faithful friends remain loyal in times of famine. Fake friends fade forever. Faithful friends forgive your failures. Fake friends fear your faux pas. Faithful friends affirm your achievements. Fake friends frolic when you flounder. Faithful friends confirm your youthfulness when you're 50. Fake friends suggest faithless to look 40. Faithful friends give you that, uh, give, give what they can freely. Fake friends just take unfairly. Well, this femme fatale feels rather fortunate to have some of the fabulous faithful types. In fact, some are even fetching, fascinating, forthright, and funny. But most of them are fluffy, false, faint, and flighty. 
No fools rush in, in my world, except for the fascist feather-brained Tories, that is. It was a time of Tories in Toronto. It was a bad politically here. The fickled finger of fate award certainly goes to them, but alas, I digress. As it's my fate to meet my fifties within the fortnight, it seems appropriate this funny girl forgot not the fond people who have filled my life. I look forward to the next fun-packed fifty. And then below, what I would ask people to do, I'd say, forsooth, find a formula to forge your own fable. Fairy tales can come true. Let's, f let's find fellowship in the word power. And then I listed a number of F words that I hadn't used in that and suggested to people that they write something for themselves, whatever it may be. Now, this is up on our uh, Facebook page so that, you know, you can kind of read it. There's another one, too. And I'm in the process, actually, of rewriting uh, this uh, let latest edition for, you know, maybe 2020. It was a retirement uh, thing that I had in mind. But do you see, when you, the power of focusing on a certain aspect of expression, it makes a huge difference in how you express, rather than just, you know, putting pen to paper or finger to keyboard and, you know, just saying what you think people may want to hear. It's a deep dive, ladies. It is a deep dive, and it's an important one, because not only will it work well for you in the whole I'm the boss of me, it works well in your life in any number of ways. Cards that you're writing to friends or family, uh, a business letters that you're doing, speeches that you're writing, things of this nature. Having good word power is essential. So when it comes to writing your elevator speech or your personal commercial, you will find that it it you you have a lot more uh tools in your words to pick from you have a uh, if you relate it to makeup you have the best brush for the job does that make sense now i'm going to show you i've had permission to do this uh, I, i'm going to show you some of the commercial some of the um commercials that people have written of course they won't be identified and this one says hi i'm fill in the blank, for many years, my role as a caregiver and an NICU nurse. My life has had its ups and downs. I am now at a place where I can care for me and I enjoy my family and friends. Cooking, sewing, and jewelry making. Peace is my priority and I make deliberate choices to protect my total self free from negativity. I always strive to offer kindness, honesty, and gratitude to others. Now, while this is, this is great, it can be greater. For one thing, um, people, when you're doing an elevator speech, if you're wanting to influence someone within 15 seconds about why they should be connected with you, they don't necessarily want to know the details of your likes or the details of your past. Does that make sense? And while those things are wonderful for an elevator speech, they need to be tightened up and, and removed. And in, in an example, let me see. Um, instead of this first sentence, for many years, my role as a caregiver and an NICU nurse, I'm retired from uh, uh my caregiver role or as as an NICU nurse. I'm retired from my my enjoyment of or however you want to express it. But if it's not relative to the conversation or the person you want to um, make a influence, then that might not be relevant. In other cases, it would be. It would be relevant if you were looking for a job, but not necessarily in a social situation. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Hi, I'm 
fill in the blank, Grand Dame of Menage, bygone NICU nurse, love that, U.S. patent holding inventor, entrepreneur, uh, with a passion for organizing, declaring itself in various forms, perhaps not the obvious, and continuously entertained by my own voracious curiosity. Now, that is compelling, makes me want to find out more about this person. I love how she has tightened everything. She's gotten across what she uh, has been about, what she is, and what she's uh, looking sort of forward to. And it's short, and it's within that 15 seconds. Okay? So let's take a look at our next one. Hello, my name is... And I, const and I am constantly growing and evolving. My passion is in helping others. I prefer elder care. And in my family is also my heart. I had a pastor tell me once that I have a servant's heart and think that's true. I love classical music. I look. It took me years to learn to control emotions that felt out of control. And then I realized I didn't feel at all so I had to learn to balance. There's some great things in here. Today, I'm 57 and confident, strong, no longer a victim of others of circumstance. I hold my power and I choose who to share it with. I have conquered my addictions and I feel great. I learn to be proud of and love me. I am the boss of me. Now, do you see how... how um, as she's moved forward in in this, uh, uh, you know, heartfelt um, elevator speech, it's gotten stronger towards the end. Now, why is that? Because she's talking about it from a positive uh, perspective. Um, some like a, some of this stuff. My passion is in helping others. I prefer elder care. Now, here's another thing. Grammar, ladies, grammar is really important it, 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 to make sure that your sentence structure is good. And that's something you can work on 10 minutes a day. Just, you know, there's all kinds of things online. I had a pastor tell me once that I have a certain uh, a servant's heart. And I think that's true. Okay. Question is, how can that be brought down into two or three words? I, I have a heart to serve. It doesn't, it's not necessary, you know, if you're trying to influence somebody and you've only got 15 seconds to say where that came from. In other circumstances, it might be. Is that making, is it, any of this making sense? And to say I'm no longer a victim of others or circumstances. That isn't necessary if she's going to say I hold my power and I choose to share with, share with and I choose who to share it with. I am a strong woman who shares herself, but a bing, whatever. Do you see the differences in that? Okay, another great one. Okay, let's see, and we have another one. Hi, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur and work full time. I enjoy pop-up markets, the outdoors, and new adventures, striving for healthier skin and hair, making personal hygiene products as a hobby, prompted lifestyle changes and personal growth. I have goals, dreams, and a bucket list. I love that last sentence. I love it, it because it, 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 it's strong. It's, it's, um, it's, it's forward. It's, it's solid. And when she says bucket list, it adds a sense of humor and, 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 and you want to, you want to, you know, you want to meet this, per you want to know more about this person, right? There's, do you see, do you see what, how, how that makes a difference? And it's short. It gets to the point right away. And here's this one. Hello, I'm. I am an accomplished seamstress. I enjoy music and my family. I just placed my husband of 48 years in long-term care. At 66, I'm struggling with where I fit now. Well said. And if you want to influence somebody, you might, first of all, ladies, we don't have to say how old we are, ever. I'm not, I'm not for one second advocating hiding it, but it's not necessary to tell people how old you are. 
uh, when, when you're when you're trying to influence or give an elevator speech or a personal commercial, when you're writing a, a um, uh, you know a resume, sometimes those things are a little bit different. But this is this is not for resume writing necessarily. This is for just influencing somebody you see across the room or you're at a cocktail party or whatever. You're like, oh, this person's really interesting. I'd really like to get to know them. So you go up to them and you shake their hand and say, hi, I'm bada bing, bada bing, bada bing, bada bing, bada boom. Done. Does that make sense? And um, saying she's an accomplished seamstress is wonderful. Now, how can she take that and work uh, her, her skill set? She could say skilled, highly skilled uh, seamstress, has a little bit more weight to it than may be accomplished. And this is where your thesaurus and your dictionary comes in and helps. I enjoy music. While she does, and many people do, and my family, as many people do, that's not relevant to what you're trying to do to influence unless it's a social situation where that is relevant. Does that make sense? Anyway, thank you very much for this one. And our last contestant says, hello, my name is, and I'm a 10-year colon cancer survivor. I'm a fast-walking wife and one-year empty nester with a part-time job and too many hobbies. I'm now trying to slow down, simplify, and get used to laundry and cooking for two. Well, you know, that's 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 interesting. That's great. Um, you could take out 10-year uh, people are are do not. I know this. Uh, while I totally appreciate this, when you're introducing yourself to someone, people aren't interested in other people's um, medical histories, unless, of course, you're in a situation where it's about a medically based, you know, group of people that are talking. Um, is it, does that make sense? Revealing certain parts of yourself aren't necessary. For, for for these situations, okay? And uh, and and I like where she's gone on I'm trying to slow down, simplify, and get used to laundry and cooking for two. That's a great line. Now how how can she say I've had a I've had a great life as or I've had I've had a challenging life I've overcome some challenges in my life, but a bing but a boom and you know, and move on for there. Does that does that make sense? So I want to thank uh, all, all the, the 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 ladies that uh, allowed me to put these up because I think that they're really good and they really help us. And that's on on our Facebook page. Um, it will it will. Uh, you know, this is where we talk about these things. This is where we try to update them or, or, or refresh them or refine them. And, uh, and, and I think, you know, it, I can see some changes already, massive changes. It's really good. And, and, and here's the thing, ladies. When you're writing this elevator speech or personal commercial, what you're going to find is there's going to be a lot of things that will come up for you. You, when you, when because you, we're, you know, we're not trained to think about ourselves. We're trained to think about the world around us, right? So, and I'm not for one second saying exclude the world around you. I'm saying make room for yourself, make because you are a cog in that wheel of how everything works. You are a main. You're part of the. You're part of the thing that makes the whole thing work, right? So. When these things are coming up about you, this is where your journal, and we will talk about this later on, this is where a dedicated journal, and I would suggest a dedicated journal just for this purpose too. All kinds of things will come up for you when you start thinking about it. When you have to really hone your life down and make it tight, it, um, it, it, it's an exercise that most people aren't familiar with. They're, they're not they're not used to doing it. Um, even though we are on social media, it's fast paced, uh, you know, sh short, you know, sentences and that sort of stuff. Social media is not something to emulate, really, because most of it's, you know, bullying and, and stuff. There's a lot of good stuff, too, but you have to search it out and find the good stuff and and ixnay the rest, if that makes any any sense to you at all. Um let me see. What else did I have here? Uh, yes. So uh, to review this, uh, make the thesaurus and the dictionary. They are your best friends. Absolutely no 
two ways about it. Experiment with different commercials for different reasons or situations. What, one for like maybe if you're dating, what would you write? It would be very different than if you were, um, let's say, um, volunteering uh, your services at, from a homemaker's perspective. OK, uh, or it would be very different if it was for a job or if you if you are, are well, whatever it is, you know, it, it, situations and reasons are different. So they have to be appropriate for those things. And here's the thing that's really good. You're not sure how long it takes. Record it on your smartphone. Pretty much all of them have a recording device of some kind. Just just have your your your, your elevator speech right there. Click on. To, to record and start recording right away and listen to it afterwards and listen to it again and then listen to it and and with your text in front of you and see what you can edit out if you get to a spot and it, and it hits you like oh you know maybe I hit the pause button then check your text and edit okay and, and go through and, and you'll find that that will make a difference. And it will also tell you if you are 15 seconds, if you're going, if you're going 17 or 20, it doesn't cut it. It's got to be 15. I mean, when I put mine up, it was 15, 10. So, you know, if I had to do that over again, I'd, I'd look at a way to take out a word or something. And also... What this will do is start you on the road that we're going to address later on about how we use our voices and are using our voices in different ways for different situations. It's a powerful tool that most people do not pay attention to seriously. So, so, so do that. And of course, journal your discoveries because um, you will come up with all kinds of things about yourself that you have uh, you maybe have forgot about or maybe you didn't realize or things of that nature okay so now let's move on to our questions and see what we have here and Erica Christine uh, and Zol Winnie and Patty uh, Cole and Christine Snitkin uh, from Texas and Ginger from Florida and Carol, Car Carola uh, from Sweden. What a beautiful name. Love all your phenomenal tips. Thank you. Um, oh, I know what I need to do. I'm going to move this over here and see how long it lasts. I think I fixed the technical issue. Good morning from Holland. Love all of your tips. You're welcome, Leon, and, uh, and and I'm, I'm glad you do enjoy. Okay, went out after 20 seconds. All right. And Kathy Werner got here. Oh, good, Kathy. And Robin and uh, and N and Daniela Libby uh, and let's see and Daniela Libby says yes it makes sense I'm not sure which part Daniela but <laughs> that's okay <laughs> thank you anyway now I'm gonna see how yeah okay so I think I might keep it up for another 10 seconds and Linda uh, Martin good morning from Phoenix Arizona good morning Linda and um and let me see, Kathy uh, Werner says, good point about age revealing. Yeah, see, we we have been indoctrinated to uh, think about our age, right? You're getting older, you're getting older, you got to stop it, you got to fight it, you got to do it. It's all, it's all propaganda, it's all indoctrination, it's all grooming that we get. So we don't have to tell anybody our age, unless you want to, unless it's relevant to the situation. In, let's suppose it's a club maybe for senior citizens or I don't know, whatever it is, but something where you need, you need to reveal your age. Sometimes you need to reveal your age for a job. It depends, you know. But if you're just meeting somebody right away, you don't need to, you don't need to reveal your age. Let them guess. It's, it's nobody's business. It's not relevant to anything, generally speaking. Um, Linda, I've noticed uh, uh, you mentioned your age. People see you different. Uh, yes, and it depends. Like, I have no problem um, mentioning my age. Um, 
but I'm in a different situation. I my 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 focus now in my life is not my family. It's not my 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 when I was working for the man. Uh, it's not in my business. It's in it's in my monkey business that I've been doing since I've retired. So my age based on going gray and loving it and two minute tips for the older uh, woman femme fatale is relevant because I can show like it's 73. This is what 73 looks like uh, with, you know, that's what it is. And everybody can look great at whatever age they are. So it's kind of the reason I will say my age is because it's relevant to what I'm doing now. So does that, does that make sense? Um, and Mary Portland and Hazel L., I'm new. Um, what's this? Uh, this is a, a course that we're doing or sessions or workshop or whatever you want to call it, Hazel, on uh, I'm it's called I'm the boss of me. Now, there's a playlist that I've 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 put up on the page um, for and I'm going to have the playlist just for. I'm the boss of me exercises, the, 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 the session and then the review, the session and then the review. Because I think halfway through, be, like between each session, because each session is going to be every other week. So between, we can have a review where people are having difficulty or they're stumbling or whatever. We can go over it and figure it out. And Megan Burleson, good morning. Can't believe I actually made it. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, and uh, Nancy Knight, good morning from Napa Valley, California, beautiful wine country. I'll bet it is. And Sharon uh, Steink, uh, my first live, usually watch the recording. Thank you from Indiana. Wonderful, Sharon. Glad you're on board. Now, does anybody have any questions about uh, what, what has been talked about so far this morning with respect to your personal commercial or your elevator speech? Well, I, you know what I would like to suggest is that you have one for each. One that's more personal for personal reasons. Uh, maybe joining a club, maybe, um, uh, you know, uh, letting people know more about you who are, you know, just re relaxed or, uh, are, or whatever. I'm not, I'm not really sure, but, um, and then one, if you're looking for a job, although some of us are retired, so we're not looking for a job necessarily, but we may be looking to volunteer, okay? So think of it from those perspectives. Thesaurus, smartphone, record it, listen to it, edit it, and um, and that will help make a, a, a big difference in the way um, the way you see yourself and then present yourself to the world, however that may be for you. Okay, so it doesn't seem like we have any questions. So, um, like I said, the, the Facebook page is up on, uh, yeah, on Facebook. Uh, uh, and it's, and, and I have, I've, oh, Facebook is, mm, and YouTube, uh, and Google, uh, the algorithms and the mess that they're making of a lot of things is really difficult right now. So, it's got facebook.com forward slash groups but then it's got this long number i wanted it to be boss of me but oh uh, now my own page says boss of me and i can't seem to fix it so anyway the link is there it'll take you to the page if you want to join like i said it's closed and it's private so and we have a comment from megan i have no problem telling anybody my age especially at this point in my life because i am totally jazzed to be my age almost 69 because this is what 69 looks like i understand megan i under i understand i believe me i do um and 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 and, and in the right situations yeah but there's times when it's not it's not um, necessary. It, it, you know, you have to be discerning as to when, when to, to, to say your age and when not to. And Kathy says, can we be helpful to others with 15 seconds of insight into life in some sort? Uh, can we be helpful to others with 15 seconds of insight? Um, yeah, I think so. I think so. I mean, there was a couple of the, um, the, the, um, commercials that were put up here 
one one of the ones was um, p- uh, peace or the power of peace or or something it was very very good. Um, and and then another line that stuck out to me was um, you know. Um, uh, Obviously, it didn't stick out that much. I can't find the words. Speaking of words, but if you, if you go back and look at the, um, the this portion of it in the playback, you'll see where the personal commercials were listed, and there is some, there is you you certainly can make an impression within fifteen seconds. Think about it. Most commercials for radio, television, uh, internet, whatever are 15 seconds. In fact, those are long. They're more like 10. And look at some of the commercials that they have for uh, ads that they have, okay, for, uh, and they're only like for five seconds. I am serious. It's a different way of thinking. It's a different way of doing things, but that's what the world is. And if you want to make somebody, if you want to influence somebody whose opinions you want to garner or to, to be friends with or to whatever, then you've got to give them something to want to be uh, pulled into you. Does does that make sense, Kathy? Uh, okay. And Daniela, the recording is an awesome, awesome idea and tip. Oh, yeah, I, I use it all the time, all the time. And Megan says, agreed. Not sure what you're agreeing with, but that that's fine. Thank you, Megan. Okay. Oh, and Kathy says, uh, like your own jingle. Yes, Kathy, exactly. And if you want to be really creative, you could add some music to the background if you wanted. You know, well, maybe when it comes to voice, I, I'll, I've got I've got a demo that I kept when I was doing voice work uh, that I kept as my demo that I would, you know, my agent would send out to to get voiceover gigs. And I've got a quite a variety of voices and tones and words that are being said. So when we get to the voice aspects of this uh, uh, of this little um, venture, uh, I will certainly bring that out. Um, and Linda says, this is so interesting. I've only recently become in charge of me and I'm loving it. Wonderful and congratulations, Linda. Yes, isn't it a wonderful feeling? And Pat Thompson says it's hard to come up with things when disabled and retired. Ah, Pat, thank you for that very good point. It may be, but actually it's not. Because I'm, well, there's there's lots of people who are around who are disabled. And there's a young man, and I'm sorry, I cannot think of his name, but he was born without his arms and his legs. And he, I believe he lived on Australia or England, but he travels the world as a motivational speaker. He is married. He has children. Um, Talk about an inspiration. I'm retired. Other people are retired. And look what can be done in retirement. Retirement, only, from my perspective anyway, this is just me, retirement means I'm still working just as hard as I ever did. The only thing is I'm not getting paid for it. I'm not complaining. That's my choice. I'm not being paid for it. I'm. I'm this is my contribution back to the world, uh, uh, you know, in, in re- my retirement years, is sharing the skills I've learned throughout my life. So there are lots of things. And, and you know, like I've got to have knee surgery in, in, in January. I'm having a knee replacement. My knee is really messed up. I have to use a walker right now. I use a crutch uh, when I, you know, when I go out which isn't very often, but I, but I, I do, but that's where I'm at. And I'll tell you when my makeup's done and I'm looking my best and I have to use the walker, I'll tell you, I get, you know, people stand aside, men, young men are willing to help all that sort of thing. It's wonderful. You know, so it's all in how we look at things, you know, and I won't need the walker later. I, after the surgery and I'm healed and everything, but it's a time where I, ha- I am, far less mobile than I was. That doesn't make me disabled. It means it, it makes me uh, mobility limited. 
So it's all in how we look at it and how, all in how we dance around it. We can still, listen, even if I can, okay, let me give this as an example. When I was younger, I wanted to be a dancer so bad. I wanted to be a ballerina. That was my calling. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. When I got older, I, um, I ended up singing. And I sang for my supper for a few years, and that was fine. But then things changed. Life changed. Drama and disaster and crisis hit my life again. And, you know, things were shelled, and that was okay. I worked through it. Um, and at each, at, at each stage, you take what you've got that's workable and make the most out of it it. Does that make sense? Like that young man with no arms and no legs, he makes something out of his, he makes it count for something. People who have a disability in a certain way, they may be, person with epilepsy as an example, may, uh, may run a help group for people with epilepsy on a social media platform. You know, people with heart conditions, young people with heart conditions, uh, you know, like my son has, um, excuse me, um, we, uh, sit on boards and help each other and motivate and help the younger children being born with, with the same kinds of heart dysfunctions. And they help them, they encourage them or encourage their parents. There's always something for us to do. We just have to look for it. That was a bit more than you were asking for, right, Pat? <laughs> And Daniela says, how do you react to 15 seconds of bragging? Too many times the small talk introduction. Whoops. Now I'm going to have to hold that on there again. The small talk introduction from people is ridiculous bragging and it's such a turnoff. Well, I understand what you're saying and that's why we're doing this exercise. Is I'm not sure that it's necessarily bragging. Some people it is, but most people I think it's just saying, you know, what they're about, what their lives are, what, what the, you know, you know, what they cook for dinner or whatever. People aren't interested in that. What people are interested in is who are you? What, where are you headed? What have you overcome? What can I learn from you? That's what people are looking for. Okay. So it's a question of just you know, just honing what we've got, because everybody has got so many great qualities that they don't even know about. And that's where this exercise helps to unfold those. And Erica, people are attentive for about 15 seconds at most. Yes. Absolutely, Erica, right on the mark. And Kathy Verner, I am disabled and retired also. I hear you, Kathy, and you've got a voice. You're interactive. You, um, you, uh, you're, you're out there. You're doing. You, you know what I mean? You've got lots to offer. It's, the question is just, it's, it's deconstructing who you've been groomed to think you are and bringing in the things that haven't been highlighted or illuminated. And, and, and that's, uh, that, make, that makes a difference. Uh, Pat Thompson, any advice, always welcome. Oh, you're, you're welcome, Pat. And Megan, um, uh, uh, people who have disabilities can have so much to give others because they have gone through so much. Yes, absolutely. 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 I mean, um, and it's usually think about the great leaders of our world. Um, and I mean, the real leaders are the ones who have gone through fire and been steeled. They've survived, they've thrived, and they share. You know, so, so the, the, and they motivate just by the fact that they, they, that they have been steeled. It, it makes a difference. So, and everybody has in some way, shape, or form. Everybody has gone through their own personal hell or whatever, and they've overcome it. And, 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 and now, how can, you, how can you word that in such a way that it's compelling? And Kathy says, can you see me shaking my head? <laughs> yes, to everything you say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I can, Kathy. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> now you see, Kathy, you've always got something funny to add 
to whatever's going on too. Do you see that in yourself? Because I do. And you see, that's that's a value you have. That's a that's a, that's a real value you have. And 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 it's something to to kind of focus on and make the most out of it. Ah, <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> okay, well, there doesn't seem to be any uh, more questions. So what I'm going to do is bring up our lip tip. And another way to customize your lip color. This is number 00, no, that's number 005, and this is number 55. Now, do you see the difference in the shades? What you can do is take, let me see if I can do it here for it. I'm going to take the, and put it aside. And I'm going to take the, oh, if I can get it, the wand from the 55, and I'm going to put it into the 005. Swirl it once, and it comes out blended, or a little bit darker. Not as dark as, as this one, but not as light as this one. And I'll tell you, looking at these two shades, this is exactly what I did this morning. I, 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 I put the, the 55 into the 005, swirled it once, and did it. And then I put, I put a much lighter color on in here. I think it was 110 in the center. Now, I, th 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 so you can take, like, say you've got a darker color that you're, it's not working so well, or it's too dark for you, or whatever. Take a lighter color, or you could take a color like the the one ten. Where is it? Oh, I don't have it. But you could take a one ten and put it into the into the darker color here, and you get a, a really nice blend. It's fun. I'm telling you, it's a and it's a way to um. It's a way to customize lip color for yourself. Now here's the other trick. I should have said two tips, two lip tips. You see these? They're the flat angle brushes that you hear me tell about, right? This one here, I use for brows only, dedicated. This one here, I use for eyeliner, dedicated only. This one here, I'm now using for lips. I don't know about you gals, but I'm now moving into the next stage where everything's falling in on itself. I'm getting a lot more uh, around my face. Now, when I put my lipstick on, it's not good to look down in a mirror. Remember, remember the Golden Girls when they said, you know, when you're this age and you're you're you 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 look at your you look at your face on the counter in a mirror. Don't do that, okay? What you do is you hold your mirror when you're putting your lipstick on. Your your mirror should be oh, let me see, about about like this, okay? So you get it on, and guess what? In some cases, it's still not right. With this, let me get back, let me get this uh, brush again. I simply touch the wand or the, the whatever. Do you see that? And then I go along and fill in where I need to if it's off. Because this side of my lip, yeah, this side is always higher, so I have to bring it down. Sometimes I hit it, sometimes I miss it. But for fixing it, a very thin, flat, fine, um, uh, flat-edged angle brush that you can find in your local art store, ladies, your local art store. Then when you finished, you simply, I'll show you, spray a little alcohol on a tissue or a paper towel and simply wipe it and it's clean for the next time. I got to tell you, uh, that is one way of, and I like it so much better than a lip brush because it's more defined. And remember, it's the tiniest little strokes in makeup that make the biggest difference that give you the most 
payoff. And this tiny, tiny, tiny little detailed brush is the best uh, for uh, uh, for your your lips. And here's the other thing. When you put your lipstick on, just sit natural. And then apply, not smiling, not any of this, just natural. And then fix what you need to. And I do this oftentimes after I've put on my my bomb but it, it you know either way before or after the bomb it doesn't matter um because it's just the thinnest line that makes the biggest difference in correcting your lips and if you have as my sister wendy says corrugated lips because of the lines around your lips this is a beauty relaxed and just go over top like that so that's the lip tip i hope that helps so let's see if we have um, any any questions from anybody still. Uh, and let's see, Patty says, ooh, that's a nifty trick. Yes, I'm glad you like. Uh, and Kathy says, thank you. And yes, I love to laugh. Oh, I know. <laughs> and Rebecca uh, is from uh, Hello, Texas. Welcome. And... Patty Cole says, uh, perfect. Sometimes it's hard to get that really fine contour with the Super State 24 applicator. Yeah, it is. It, it is. It is, Patty. And I've had I've I'm starting now to have a little trouble. And the only reason I'm having trouble is because of my, you know, I have more flesh, you know, that's, you know, moving around on my face. And it's, it's just making it a little bit more difficult. And for those who have hands that are trembly. You know that happens with age. Put your elbow on your on on your counter and and hold it with your uh, hold your wrist with your other hand to steady it as you do that. Okay, if you have any tremors in your hands at all. Okay, um, and Megan says I can never get my lip line right just using the tip of the Maybelline lipstick wand. Thank you. You are welcome, Megan. Uh, and Roberta says how to stop bleeding lipstick. Hello. Maybelline 24 hour Superstay is the only one that I recommend. Because watch this, Roberta. Watch this. Nothing. It does not move. Look at that. Doesn't move. Doesn't bleed. Doesn't feather. Doesn't transfer. When you eat anything oily, it will break down more on the inside here. But it won't bleed. It takes two seconds to just... And you're done. But if you add some balm before you eat, it's fine. It's the only one I recommend. There's also the ink uh, 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 by Maybelline 24 Hour, and there's their crayon. Now, their crayon is fine, but it doesn't last as long. It lasts longer than wax-based lipsticks. Never buy a wax-based lipstick again. It's just like, come on. We're so over that. So the crayon is okay. The ink, uh, it, it lasts more than the crayon, but it doesn't last as long as the liquid. But the liquid lasts the longest. Now you can mix the liquid and the crayon and the and the ink. People are, are trying different things. Okay. Um, and Roberta says, thank you. And Erica, Rimmel works also uh, well also. I don't know about their, their lip colors, but I haven't heard anything, Erica, about that works as well as the 24-hour Superstay. Seriously. I mean seriously. And the thing that I love about it is you don't need a lip liner. Now, speaking of lip liners, if you would prefer to put your lip liner on first, you know, you can do that with this fine little brush. Okay? You can put that on first. I put my lipstick on first and then I correct if there's any spot, because I know pretty much where it has to go. And then I correct afterwards if, if it's needed. And it's needed more and more these days. And Patty says, I think the ink is touted as a 16-hour stay. Um, yeah, it's not. 
it's it doesn't it doesn't last as long as the uh, liquid, for sure, for sure. Okay, um, I think that's. Uh, I guess that's. There doesn't seem to be any other questions. So, just to remember, who are you? What do you, what what's your belief systems? What's important to you? What are your passions? All those sorts of things. Who are you? What are your strengths? What are they? Because everybody's got them, and it, and sometimes they're just hidden. Like Kathy just said, she loves to laugh. That's strength. You know what I mean? Strengths don't have to be simple and man mountain, you know, lifting weights or any of that nonsense. Strengths are, are all kinds of little intellectual things. Dust off your thesaurus and your dictionary, ladies. Seriously, if you spent, think about this now, 10 minutes a day just looking, or if you decided each day you'd try a brand new word and use that word as much as possible during the day, you'd learn, you'd add to your vocabulary for sure. And be sure your 15 seconds captures the person's interest that you're speaking to. That's what this whole thing is about. You want to capture their interest in you. Okay? So, um, I want to just remind people, too, that um, this is the new playlist that's up on the page, on the front page, and here's the address. So if you haven't um, uh, subscribed, please do so. And on Facebook, this is what it looks like. I'm the boss of me, and here's the Facebook address, which will be uh, in the uh, show notes down below. And if you've liked this, please you know, like it, put a, you know, put a like in, uh, and share it with your friends for anybody who's looking to join our, our little group here, uh, you know, getting the most out of, out of our lives that we can. And remember, if you're looking for anything, you can go to the playlists or you can search. And here's our quote for today. You are what you focus on and consistency feeds your goals whatever they may be, by Tony Robbins. Okay, well, I think that's it, ladies. Thank you so much for your time. Remember to zero in on your passions and your beliefs. Know more about yourself. Together, we will both design your attitudes and direct your life. Okay, thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you next week for session two. Mwah!